Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another ship fitting guide for Eve Echoes. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the heavy interdictor cruisers, or HICs, Hicks as they're often referred to, in the form of the Mala Interdictor. Now, these are ships that I've never really covered much on this channel because I'm not overly familiar with them, but after a discussion on the official Eve Echoes Discord, I sat down with Bishop from OG and had a little chat about this particular Hector, which he referred refers to as the Thicter, and I can kind of see why. So in today's video we're going to be talking about the Mala Interdictor, what it is, what it does, and how you can make the best out of this really cool ship. And there's a lot of stuff to cover in today's video, so we are going to jump right in after the usual messages. If you like the video, please hit the like button on it. It really, really helps me as a YouTube content creator. The YouTube algorithm is a fickle woman, and we need every little prod and poke that we can get in order to get her to recommend our content. In addition to that as well, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve, Eve Echoes, and Eve Online, and come support me on Patreon if you want to keep me doing what I'm doing. Alright, let's jump right in to having a look at the Mala Interdictor. The Mala Interdictor is the Amar Empire's Tech 10 Heavy Interdiction Cruiser, HIC. So we're going to go into the Amar ship tree, right up to the top of Tech 10 here of the cruiser branch, and we're going to open up into the Mala Interdictor itself. This is really quite a cool ship. I do like how the Mala looks. I've got a bit of a history with the Mala. Some of you may remember once upon a time I did a video on the Tech 6 version of it where I accidentally fitted small armor repairers into the low slots because, let's be honest, they have the exact same name and icon between small and medium armor repairers. Put those into the low slots accidentally, jumped out into a combat demonstration and then sat there going, it, it should be tankier than this. It's probably my skills. Yeah. Yeah, a bit of a meme worthy time for me. Cool looking ship, some interesting nano cores and that for it here as well. Dark Halo looks particularly badass in my opinion. Sanchez a bit sort of hit and miss, but I do like the Blood Raider stuff as well, some really cool stuff. Anyway, attributes and fittings. As this is a heavy interdiction cruiser, we have only three high slots. This thing ain't going to be kicking out much in the way of DPS in the grand scheme of things. That is by design. I know some people are still lamenting the fact that interdictors had their high slots gutted for cruisers the purpose of that was simply that if you're sitting there doing a gate camp if you were doing it in a ship like this you could solo as a gate camp and that was just ridiculously powerful these are supposed to be fleet support ships so, we only have three high slots. We've got a whopping five mid slots, which give us a lot of versatility in regards to things like electronic warfare and propulsion jamming, and we've got five low slots as well, which allows us to be surprisingly tanky in various different ways. Three of each of the rig slots, because obviously it's a, a, a ship at this particular tech level. Defensively speaking, this is solid 15,799, and being in a Mars ship, most of that is in its armor, some of it is in structure, and not much at all in shield. We have a solid capacitor bank. Again, it's an Amar ship, so capacitor is what this thing has in spades. It's got a pretty okay signature radius. That is on the smaller end of cruisers. A good scan resolution of 400 meters. A pretty okay warp speed of 3.5, although that is on the lower end of cruisers. A flight velocity of 320, which is surprisingly nimble. And an all right mass and inertia. It's faster and more agile than you would think it is. If we look at its trait descriptions, being an interdictor, the first thing we need to understand is its roll bonus, the fact that it can fit warp disruption field generators. Now remember, unlike interdiction sphere launchers, these are basically bubbles that are projected from the ship itself and move with the ship. So you in the Mala interdictor, you are the center of that bubble at all times, kind of like how a shield guardian operates, and heh, more on that later. If we look at advanced propulsion jamming, we're getting a 4% increase to armor resistances and a 10% increase to warp disruption field effective range, so we're increasing the size of the bubble whilst making our ship tankier. And then advanced cruiser command is, yeah, not particularly much really here going on. A 25% increase to medium laser damage and a 10% reduction to the amount of capacitor that those lasers need. It's kind of a mala skill thing going on there, but it doesn't really do much, as we'll see now. As as we move into sort of a fitting section here to see this. 
yeah, we've got three high slots. As I said, this doesn't give much in the way of DPS. 323.51, that's really nothing. 285.07 from the turrets. Um, a lot of this is because obviously here on Fulmination I've got maxed out drone skills, so I'm actually getting 38.44 DPS out of one single solitary Mark IX infiltrator down there. So, the ship itself isn't actually even breaking 300 DPS, which for a Tech 10 cruiser, that's abysmal damage. Now, for this, I've gone here for medium pulse lasers. You can go for beam lasers. You can go for whatever the heck you fancy. Pulse lasers are probably good enough because you've got that 15 kilometer optimal range and an accuracy fall off there of 6.75. So you're gonna be able to shoot anything that's basically in the bubble. If anything happens to get inside the interdiction sphere and is trying to blow you up, then this just gives you a little bit of firepower back at it. Like if an interceptor is trying to tackle you, um, then ultimately you can just, you know, you can do stuff to it, is the point I'm trying to get at. Now, being an interdictor, obviously our primary role in a fleet is going to be stopping anything else from moving. And so what Bishop suggested here for the fit was that we would have three stasis webifiers. Again, if anything happens to be getting close enough um, to try and take you out, you can web them and shut that movement right down. You can also then scram them to stop them escaping. And a Kaldari Navy Warp Scrambler is more than enough here. Four Warp Jammer Strengths should be enough to hold something in position. And of course, we have the Warp Disruption Field Generator. Now, we've talked about these in other videos. There's a Catskull Academy lesson dedicated to propulsion jamming via interdiction spheres, and the Warp Disrupt Field Generator is obviously a version of that. Essentially, what you're looking at here is an, a module that when you tap it, it uh, lasts for 30 seconds before it has to go again, and it consumes 1200 gigajoules of fuel out of your cargo hold, and then creates a bubble that nothing can warp into or out of. And currently, thanks to some of the bonuses I've got here, that's at a disruption field range of 39.93 kilometers, 40 kilometers there of a bubble that's in every direction. That is a humongous bubble there that is going to really hold anything in position while the rest of your fleet blows it up. Now, for tankiness, Bishop has suggested going with a triple setup here of 800mm reinforced steel plates. This is actually becoming a bit of a meta tactic, and it's something I've not really covered in videos, um, but it can be quite an interesting way of doing things. Rather than using an armor repairer or a shield booster, you use extenders or plates, and when you start to take damage, you activate that plate and it gives you a massive boost um, to your total hit points, and then as that starts to run down, as the enemy ships look like they're about to start chewing into your actual armor, you activate the second one, then again, when it looks like they're gonna start chewing into your armor, you activate the third one, and so on, so forth, and these have a reactivation delay of 60 seconds. So as long as after the first one goes off, you've got 60 seconds to use these two, then the first one is off cooldown, and if you can, if you're not taking enough damage, then you can actually cycle these in definitely. It does really chew your capacitor though, so you do have to be careful with this, and it doesn't work on every single ship, but it's kind of active passive tanking, <laughs> if that makes sense. The theory is that you should never really be taking much damage on your armor, because ultimately, even if like you've cycled through the first three of these, you take a little bit of damage on your armor, then the first one's off cooldown again, so you activate it, then the second and third one run there, so you don't actually ever really take much damage at all on your active actual armor you're constantly taking onto those plates or extenders. This means we actually only need to have one adaptive armor hardener here, Corpus C-type, because they're dirt cheap. Um, obviously this is just going to increase all of our armor resistances. If you know what you're up against, if you know your enemy's doctrine, for example, and it's going to be something that only uses two weapon types, like for example they're using a lot of lasers, then, well, yeah, you might want to change this for a reactive. Um, you could even go damage control unit here, but it's just, ugh, I did talk about this and no, it's, it's best to go with your three extenders and the hardener there. Now the final low slot is a medium micro warp drive. This is because when we are on a particular target, you can use the micro warp drive to travel at basically three kilometers a second um, and keep up with that target and keep it inside that bubble for as long as possible. Or, and this was quite an interesting idea that I hadn't thought of that Bishop suggested to me, anchor the Mala Interdictor next to whatever Guardian, Shield Guardian you're using with your fleet. 
that way, and with the micro warp drive being able to cycle, you can always keep up with whatever your shield guardian is. That way, if anyone tries to warp into the shield, they just get stuck on the outside of your bubble, rather than warping into the center of the shield and then just being able to take out that guardianship, which is a really cool little idea. Now for rigs, we've gone for straight up anti-kinetic pump, anti-explosive pump and anti-thermal pump here just to get those resistances up even higher and again these are dirt cheap rigs. The, <laughs> the engineering rigs are a bit more expensive though, auxiliary thrusters 3, dynamic fuel valve 3 and a polycarbon engine housing. Now the, the dynamic fuel valve, I'll be honest here, this was suggested to me by uh, Bishop, there's a part of me that wouldn't that doesn't see much use in this because theoretically that micro warp drive should be being cycled sort of intermittently so there's a part of me that thinks that the dynamic fuel valve could possibly be changed out for something like another polycarbon engine housing just to make sure that you accelerate and decelerate that bit faster that you can turn on a line and do that kind of stuff and um, run away if needs be maybe an auxiliary um, I don't really know what else you'd put in here, maybe even something like a capacitor control circuit or a semiconductor memory cell. I'm just not sure the dynamic fuel valve is particularly worth it, but I wanted to keep the fit as close to what Bishop gave me as possible and just sort of talk about that. Again, you might disagree, Bishop might have a reason for doing this that I haven't thought of. Anyway, for nanocores, of course, we are going to go for a disruption type nanocore. In this case, it's the Mala Dark Halo. Warp disruption field, disruption field range, plus 21%. Obviously, the additional trainings, you're going to aim for those kind of things as well. I've kept it with the basic skin, though, because I do actually quite like the basic skin on this particular ship. Now, it doesn't have to be the Dark Halo. If we were to come out of this and have a look, you'll see that for disruption, we also have the Ascension Core, which is the current one available at the time of me making this video. A lot of these are now, you know, disruption cores tends to be quite common these days, um, and especially for things like the Mala and the Bellicose and things like that. Anyway, for this though, look for a disruption core. You want something that gives you that additional range on the, uh, the warp disruption field generator field if that makes sense. And from what Bishop tells me, you can park this basically on any gate you like and it will grab anyone or anything. And if you park it properly, then you can actually easily cover the entire gate, both from ingress and egress. Um, so anyone coming into or out of the system that you are camping is going to get caught by that frankly ludicrous bubble. Now, because I don't have the skills to fly something like this on live, I don't have the capability of showcasing this in action, though I have been told that basically you should just go and check out one of Bishop's gate camps and you'll be able to see it in action there. <laughs> but fly something disposable, I feel I want to add on to the end of that. But there we go, that is the Mala Interdictor, and I would like to cover the Rupture Interdictor as well, as that is one I do have skills to fly. I'm just trying to source one at the moment. Once that's built, I'll be flying that a bit on the live server, um, have a bit of fun, see how I can do with that, see if I can get some cool footage. So if you fancy seeing me trying to gate camp with a Mala, uh, sorry, with a Rupture Interdictor, do let me know. Um, stay subscribed to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and well, hopefully that'll be out sometime soon. We'll see. Heck, who knows? Maybe even I'll live stream it. Wouldn't that be fun? Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way to the end. If you yourself have a particular fit you think I might be interested in, something you'd like me to showcase on the channel, please do reach out. I would love to be showcasing more fits. If you've got footage of some really cool kills and things like that that you've done or some cool combat anomalies and encounters, I would love to see that. I like getting to feature members of the community. Um, it helps me to showcase off more ships that I don't necessarily get to play around with, and it gets me to feature folks in the community, and I just think that's really cool. It's a lot of fun um, for everyone involved, I think. So please do reach out, let me know. Otherwise, as usual, thank you for all the support. If you do want to help keep this channel going, head to Patreon linked below in the description. Otherwise, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.